there are questions even around like a, like a company like Facebook. Do you actually want to be acquired by Facebook? What do you, what is the goal? Where would you like your technology to live? Mm. They're going to give you uh, the, the power to build it inside of Facebook if you're still early or um, maybe it's something that integrates perfectly um, or maybe they'll just crush you if you don't. Um, but there's the, the ethical question that comes into it too. Yeah. Uh, and that's a tough question. You're, you're barking up the tree of like monopolies and yeah. what they have the power to do once they get the economy of scale. And it's an interesting, it's an interesting argument to have because when you look at a Facebook, when you look at an Amazon, a Google, there's a reason these companies are who they are and there's a reason why they're so convenient for us and we get so much value from them and it's natural to get pissed at them because they're big and powerful. It's what we do in society. But it's because they're monopolies. They have a monopoly on our attention or our use for something. Thanks. And they had to get there. They had to start as a startup one day and have nothing and then eventually get to that. But once they do, these companies are no longer content to continue to play in their sandbox. Google starts as a search company. By 06, they're the first companies to have a self-driving car. A lot of people don't know. I know you know that. But yeah. like, so I talk to so many people that are like, they might have a self-driving car now. I'm like, oh, no. bitch, they had that in 2006, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yep. And Amazon starts as a book company and then he scaled it very carefully for a long time and then just hit the red button and, you know, turned it into a cloud company, turned it into data repository, turned it into buying everything. Now they're doing pharmacies, they're doing space, all this stuff. And it's like all these monopolies, when they get to that size, they now have the ability to say, we want to go into this space. So instead of just investing the R&D into it, to your point, they go in and say, all right, who's doing something really cool there who we can give a big payday and bring them in here and just let them do their thing and do it under our logo now. Yeah. Which, which I think is uh, a double-sided uh, sword because you, you have on one end um, the ability to innovate at a pace that is um, much faster yeah. than if you were not a monopoly. Um, and, and I know Teal, this is like his uh, kind of bread and butter. It was zero to one to a T, the, Peter the Thiel. entire book. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is a fantastic book, by the way. You're a fan. Yeah, huge fan. Um, it is a great book. Yeah, and, and I think it's this, uh, well, a couple of things, but one of them being um, monopolies are actually um, are actually better um, mm -hmm. is, is like kind of the core premise. And um, the, the companies in an area of great competition will in turn compete away all of the profit, mm -hmm. um, therefore stifling innovation and, and causing this kind of like uh, tumbling effect. Um, so so I, I think the analogy that he uses is um, like a restaurant um, is, is a horrible business. That's the idea that like you don't want to be the eighth, um, I, for, I forget how he tells this, so this is going to be off, but like the eighth Chinese food restaurant yes. in – um, one niche area of San Francisco. Yes. Um, yeah, it, it's, you are in a highly competitive space and, and the way to compete is usually price and therefore you're diminishing um, the, the potential scale, you're diminishing the, the profits. Um, so the way to, to break the cycle is to build a true monopoly. Um, and, and I know he talks about, this is actually something that we carried over into how we built um, my current business. But mm -hmm. it, it usually we're, we're starts... Gonna talk, we're going to talk about that. Yeah. We're going to get there. It, it usually starts with, with like this uh, core innovation, like something that is orders of magnitude greater than what exists. Mm -hmm. And then it has the, the couple of key components, one of them being uh, network effects. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. Can you describe network effects for people, just so that we know? <laughs> Network effects is tough to describe. Um, it, it's it's kind of like um, it, it's kind of like describing viral growth. Like mm -hmm. like how do you how do you describe what makes something viral? Um, Eyeballs. 
yeah 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 so the, like the network effects is like um i guess a good way to explain it might be um the the power of uh one turns into two the exponential growth that you get through um network or or through uh word of mouth if i had been the only guy to go onto facebook yeah facebook would have never been facebook yeah there yeah. needed to be all my friends going on there too yeah like, and that's, I know I'm really dumbing it down and there's more to it, but at the highest level, just for people to understand what, what you're trying to get at here, that's the easiest way to look at the top level of it, I think. Yeah. Fair? Yeah, Clubhouse. Clubhouse is a yeah. great one. Yeah. Network effects were super strong because it was invite only. Yep. So what was the first thing that I wanted to do, knowing that I only had one invite, was tell all of my friends about it on Twitter. Yep. Um, and then dish out my one invite. Um, yeah, that yeah, it cr creates this, uh, just kind of like mushroom cloud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Teal, his argument was you need that, but you also need a space where you can either vanquish all the competition cause you're better or there's not too much competition where it's commoditized and you're competing on price. That was the full takeaway if yeah. I remember, right? Yeah, and, and and I think when it comes to price too, it's um, you need to be able to achieve economies of scale. Yep. Um, yeah, which is something that like if you look at AWS, um, yeah, that's like two a t economies of scale. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So so I think that's um, I, f I forget the four pillars, but um, it, it's it's something along those lines. It's a, a great innovation starting with something that is like orders of magnitude greater than what currently exists um, to solve said problem. Then it's um, network effects, economies of scale, um, and these are kind of like the pillars to building a monopoly. I think, I think there was an – I don't know if it was one of the pillars, but it was like you have to be a little bit crazy or something like yeah. that. Which also makes sense. Right. Yeah. 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 Like you got to think different be. or like he was literally using the Steve Jobs or something. Yeah.